Hi, so I'm Adrien Thierry. I'm a CTO at Ozidia, a small uh, web and uh, mobile dev and design uh, firm in Montreal, Canada. Um, and today I want to talk to you about Ignite. So um, who here knows what Ignite is? Okay, most people, we see that uh, it's a conference organized by Infinitred. Uh, who uses it or has used it in the past? Okay, less people, good. I can have an impact then. Um, yeah, so for those who don't know what Ignite is, uh, it's a command line tool focused on React Native to help you develop faster and um, yeah, start apps faster. Um, so the main objective of my talk is to tell you, as uh, Charles Abeuf is saying, just do it, like just use Ignite because it's awesome, it's gonna make you um, gain a lot of time uh, on your development. So the first thing I want to talk about is boilerplating. So it especially applies to agencies like uh, Infinite Red and Ozidia, but um, every time you start a new project and you've done one in the past, you want to start with a base that already has a lot of what you're using. So the tooling, uh, you might have your navig uh, basic navigation in place. You don't want to redo that uh, every time you start a project from scratch. So you, the, the way to do that without Ignite is to basically create a React Native project, um, make it modular enough so it needs to have some stuff but not a lot, it's kind of a hard in between, version that somewhere and then like start one application from there and next time you start an application you restart from this app. But it implies a lot of uh, inconvenient things like, okay, it means you need to replace a lot of uh, the name of your project in a lot of files. You need to also, if you start a project three months after having created your boilerplate, you need to upgrade React Native. Anyone uh, who has upgraded React Native knows it's not a great experience. So there's another way, thankfully. Using Ignite is gonna allow you to create a project but from scratch, like with a new React Native project and adding stuff to it, um, so patching it on initialization, also according to the needs of your project. When I did according to the needs of your projects is that the boilerplate, so Ignite, an Ignite boilerplate is great because it's gonna give you a choice. When you create that new project, you could choose to have a vector icon library or not or like an animation library, or like having JS navigation or native navigation, or the example I'm gonna use mostly in this talk, um, do you need a map in your uh, application? Th this example is very uh, important because for example, setting up React Native maps today, like in your React Native application, can take up to like 20, 30 minutes even if you know what you're doing because you need to add some dependencies, modify the configuration. If you see the getting started section or installation section of that library, it's really not that easy. Um, so it's great you have a choice on what you want in your app. And basically the boilerplate is gonna make it work on its own. How does it do that? The base of Ignite, like a reactor term, uh, is plugins. So there's a bunch of plugins out there uh, for stuff from animations, icons, maps, uh, and, and, and a lot of other ones. And basically what each of these plugins are gonna do is add all the needed dependencies, patch the native files, ask you for project specific variables. What I mean by that is um, variables that you couldn't have hard coded in your uh, boilerplate because they're really per project. For example, uh, the example of the maps, uh, on Android, you need a Google API uh, key for Google Maps. So the plugin is gonna ask you that variable and put it where it needs to be in your code. And then the last thing is provide your examples on how to, do, how to use that new capability that your app now has. So for example, how do you use a map in, a, in the render of a component? So the plugin is gonna do all that. Another thing it can do is uh, like remove that capability. So you can decide, okay, in the end, 
I'm going to do a search instead of having a map displaying pins. Well, that's OK. Uh, with Ignite, you can remove all of these things, all these dependencies in that code uh, easily. Another uh, thing that uh, Ignite provides is generators. So the generators are simple commands that you can run to generate code. Uh, we open source our uh, uh, generators at Azidia, and I'm going to take them as, as example. So with our generators, we can generate components, uh, Redux boilerplate, and containers. We call them views, but they're like the the big, con the higher order component that you're going to plug into your navigation system. Um, so, for example, if I want to generate a, co a component by hand, uh, so I'm going to go in my components folder, create a new file, uh, then I'm going to surely copy paste code from another component, clean it up, rename it. Uh, if I need to have it for, uh, connected for Redux uh, to Redux for some reason, again, I'm going to need to add the, the imports, uh, I add the connect and all of that, and then I can start to work. So that's easily a three, three to five minutes. Uh, with generators, I just have to enter that common, and it's actually going to take parameters, so I can hear my draggable drawer. It's going to use that to name the file, uh, so it's going to create a file. It's going to ask me if I want it to be connected, if I want it to be a pure component or a functional component. It's going to put the good code uh, as is. It's even going to create the, my uh, just test, my basic just test for me. So that's like takes 20 seconds. So that's already five minutes uh, I want on my day. So I just want to say it again, like just do it. And if you don't like the ones that are out there, just make your own, because it's really e easy with Ignite uh, to make your own plugins. Um, how do you do your own plugin? Well, just use Ignite. Uh, Ignite has a plugin command, and uh, with Ignite plugin new, it's going to ask you a few questions, and it's going to generate you a bunch of code. That's mind-blowing, right? So let's look a little bit at the anatomy of a plugin. How, how, wh what's all that? So I'm going to go from top to bottom. First, uh, we have, like, so that's the base, like, example. Uh, you have comments. Comments, they contain the logic on how to generate the thing you want to generate. So um, templates are going to be used by the thing, uh, so the generator, uh, to, for example, lay out. The, so they're, like, basically React components with variables that you can use inside using EGS, so embedded JavaScript. It's cool because you don't have to learn a new language again. Ignite.json is kind of the manifest of your plugin. It's just going to say to an application that uses that plugin what's available, so what generators are available. And the plugin.js is the part that's going to do the setup of your React Native app for using the plugin. So for using the thing that we're adding here. So that's the one that's going to do adding dependencies, patching files, et cetera, or clean up your app if you remove it. Boilerplates are just plugins, but with extra stuff. There's a boilerplate folder. It's the base template of the JS code you, you're going to want to have in your application at startup. It's also templated, so you can use variables in there. And there's a boilerplate.js file that's actually just the boilerplates plugin.js. So that's where you're going to put your logic to ask questions, and with these answers, add, for example, plug Ignite plugins or, uh, or patching other native files. So to show you how easy it is to do, I just wanted to go over a few things that you can do in your plugin. So, under the plugin is Glugan. Glugan is like a huge toolbox of, of, yeah, of tools that you can use to manipulate files and patch files and do stuff. And to see how easy it is, here I just put an example to just ask a question. Well, you just call a JS function that says prompt ask and a question with a name, a message, and choices. So that's as easy as, it, as that. Adding dependencies is really hard. You call ignite add module with the name of the dependency. You can specify a version if you want to run React Native Link after or not. And you can, yeah, that, that's how it goes. 
Thank you. And uh, yeah, just do it. <laughs>